Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar. This is our part two of Frequently Asked Questions in Business Intelligence. This is where we gather a number of our uh, questions that we frequently get from our instant access uh, website. Basically, what that does is it gives you a full-time consultant during business hours uh, to at the reach of your fingertips. Any kind of questions you may have uh, in regards to business intelligence, we can hear, or if it's a large-scale kind of question, we can usually help direct you to the right que right area or, you know, uh, have further discussions about what you may need to address there. Uh, we've been around since 1998. Uh, we specialize in uh, business intelligence. Uh, especially the front end, a lot of the dashboards and everything like that that we've been working on recently are really exciting and we look forward to sharing those with you in future webinars. And without further ado, let me uh, give you over to Neil Dave. He is uh, part of our Instant Access team and he's going to be providing some of the questions and answers that we see pretty typically. Thanks, Trent. Um, yeah, as Trent mentioned, I'm, I'm a member of the Instant Access team, and um, you know, obviously today's webinar is talking about some of the frequently asked questions that we receive from um, our clients. So one of the things we're going to talk about today uh, briefly is the partial results or the parameter screen um, within web intelligence where you're receiving like partial results or you're not returning all the data that you are hoping to see in your report. So a lot of times we've, we've gotten uh, questions regarding that and trying to understand why whenever I run a query, um, I've, I've got all my results, I've got all my objects in my report, and then unfortunately when I run it, I only see partial data in there. So what that basically is, is the, the short answer is that that's, that's due to the fact that there's a restriction placed on the universe. And uh, if you are familiar with web intelligence, you will know that web intelligence reports come strictly from a universe. And so within the universe, you can place restrictions on there to prevent a, um, a large amount of data being pulled back. Um, the benefits of using a restriction is the fact that um, you can obviously limit the row count being returned from the report, um, and which you know, provides the user with a better query and more efficiency on your database. So a lot of times we've seen where users have built uh, runaway queries that cause possibly the database to crash uh, because of these queries that they're building that are in uh, that are not efficient and not built the right way, so as a universe designer, it's important or imperative to, um, depending on your your reporting size, your organization, and how how much data you want to restrict for users to have, you should definitely take advantage of these controls that uh, we're going to talk about. So there gonna, there's going to be two controls we're talking about. We're, I'm within the 4.0 environment. You've got the universe design tool. Um, you've also got the IDT tool or information design tool where you can place the restrictions on the universe um, in order for them to restrict data. Uh, the other way you can control data being returned is also in web intelligence. And I'm going to show you these three different places to do that right now. Um, so if I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to use a sample universe um, that comes with business objects, which is the uh, eFashion universe. And I'm just going to show you, once you click OK and bring in the universe into uh, Universe Design Tool, I'm going to go to File, Parameters. And once this fires up, the parameter screen is just your control screen or your settings for the universe itself. So it's going to put specific uh, restrictions or specific, sorry, uh, specific uh, settings you can place on your universe by this parameter screen. So uh, what you want to do is on the fourth tab here under controls, you have a query limit on here, all right? So typically in 4.0, the restriction size is already set to 90,000 rows, which typically is enough for a business object report to be returned. But you also have the ability to uncheck that to make sure that if users want to, they can just return you know, an unlimited amount of uh, records or rows for their report. Um, you can also set the execution time to run for five minutes, or you can you can dictate where uh, the execution time would be as well. Um, you can just say, well, if the report takes longer than five minutes to run, then return partial results. That's what that restriction is saying. So in here, you basically have two restriction sets if you're using the information design tool. 
Now, for some of you that are not familiar with uh, Universe uh, Design Tool, what this is is the older version of Designer. Um, this is using one data source to create a universe off of. So that's where, if you're familiar with the Universe Design Tool, um, if you've used it quite a bit, or I'm sorry, Designer, then um, with 4.0, it's basically the same thing. And you're probably very familiar with the screen. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the fact that you can limit controls in here um, based on query limits or within this control tab under parameters. The second option is under, under uh, Information Design Tool, which I have open here. And um, under Information Design Tool, once you have it open, I'm going to go to Window, Local Projects. And I have two projects open, so I'm just going to go ahead and go into the business layer. Go ahead and open that up. And what it does is I already have the, I, I have the property screen here. If I go to Query Options, this is where I can set the re restriction here if I'm using IDT or Information Design Tool. And for some of you that are not familiar with Information Design Tool, one of the big differences between that and UDT um, is the fact that you can create multiple universe, or sorry, multiple data sources into one universe. So you can have a data source coming from SQL Server, you can have it coming from Oracle or Excel or anything like that, and you can place it into one universe. So that's kind of the main difference between UDT and IDT. Um, so anyway, um, that's how you would in IDT restrict the uh, limit or restrict row restriction uh, row restrictions in your universe. So those are two ways you can do that. Now, if you want to leave those alone and not necessarily make any change on the universe, um, sometimes we've seen it where users are saying, well, I'm going to restrict it by a report. Well, that's, you can definitely do that within Web Intelligence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into our, um, our uh, business objects uh, 4.0 environment. And then I'm going to go into Web Intelligence. So again, the purpose of showing, a, showing you in this format is the fact that you don't necessarily have to make the restrictions on the universe. You can restrict it by a report as well. So you do have some options when it comes to trying to uh, restrict the number of rows being returned for a uh, business objects report. Um, so I'm going to go to universe here. Give that a minute to, uh, to load. <clears throat> And I'm going to go to the RE Fashion Universe. Okay. So once I'm in this screen, I'm just going to throw in a couple objects in here. And then here at the very top, it gives me a query uh, properties. When I click on that, uh, I've got my query, I can name my query, and then under limits, this is where I can set the restrictions on how many rows I want retrieved, or how much uh, time it would take, or this is in seconds, um, how much time it will take for the report to run. So again, um, this is useful whenever you just want to restrict it by a specific report. Um, so uh, you would see this a lot in, in public folders if uh, you're wanting to share a report with uh, multiple users. You can put a report, you create the report, you can set your limit restrictions on here, and then once you've done that, you can um, go ahead and run your query, and then return the results that you're looking for. Um, and again, this kind of helps with uh, you know, easing the tension or easing um, the load on your database to ensure that your database, one, doesn't crash, and then that users are running, it works as a fail-safe for users that are trying to run reports. Um, that they may or may not have enough uh, information on or know how to build a report from there. So um, those are the three ways of doing it. Again, it's through Universe Design Tool. You can go to File Parameters and go into the fourth tab, which is under Controls, and then make the restriction changes there. In IDT, you go into the business layer of your project and then go to the query uh, options and then make your restrictions there, uh, put your restriction there, and then within the report, Simply query properties, and then yeah, under limits, you can uh, set the restriction size on however rows or minutes you want the report to take to run. And so um, this, for one, will help with the restriction. And then the other thing is you can uncheck those boxes to make sure that partial results aren't seen for users. If you run into that type of issue as well, if you uncheck those uh, different boxes, 
you can ensure that uh, partial results won't occur. That issue will not occur. Um, Trent, that's all I have for you. Um, I, do we have any questions, Trent? Uh, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to uh, add in uh, right now. Um, Right now, I have one question, but I think that's uh, going to be better taken offline. Uh, what I will do is put up our um, our information here, and that way we can go ahead and let anyone email us any questions they may have, uh, being that this was kind of a, a short webinar, but you might have some questions that you want to address on the next uh, frequently asked questions, which is going to be in two weeks. Uh, and if anyone has any questions in the meantime, just feel free to email us. Uh, and in general, if you have any uh, input on what would be good webinar topics, something you'd like to see, please feel free to email us. Uh, it's up there on the screen. And uh, I want to thank everyone for joining today. And we'll see you in two weeks.